Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing good. So because uh, for my last video I got some positive feedback and suggestion to make an extension. So if you haven't watched my uh, very last video, I talked about the importance of brand personality and tone of voice. So I, now I'm done talking about one more factor or one more component of the brand messaging framework, which is So what is brand image? Brand image is the current view of your brand from the customer's point, right? It's the set of beliefs that the customers have about your brand due to some past experiences, marketing programs, and overall impressions that they got for your brand. However, because the brand image refers to the intangible aspects of the brand itself, there are three main uh, factors that you need to take into consideration and remember when it comes to forming the brand image and you should see it on the screen. So let's start from the first. The first one is user profiles. Uh, user profiles refers to the type of the person that uses your brand, uses your product or service. And it can be classified through demographic and psychographic factors. Demographic factors, as you all know, is uh, gender, age, uh, race, income, etc. So let's take a few examples of the other global um, brands. For example, age. Um, we can see that uh, Under Armour and Pepsi have tried to position themselves more as like a younger, fresher look rather than uh, Coca-Cola and Nike, right? Gender, we can see that Venus um, razors have more feminine association than Gillette that has more masculine associations. Then for example, let's say income, um, maybe polo shirts and BMW automobiles are associated with young, um, affluent, uh, urban professionals, right? And psychographic factors uh, can be something like social issues, um, possessions, or type of lifestyle, etc. So you can write down all those factors and see who your customer really is. Um, that is called persona, which I also mentioned more than a few times. And when you know your customers, you can offer them the products and uh, customize the service they would want to use. Okay, moving to number two, which is purchase and usage imagery. So this set of association refers to more under what kind of situations or conditions customers would want to uh, buy your product or use your service. It can be, um, for example, it, you know, in the department store, or it can be based on the location or on the distribution channel, uh, based on the experiences, etc. For example, um, for a long time, pizza chain restaurants um, have been had a strong association towards the distribution channels and the manners by which the customer would purchase and eat pizza. Uh, to make it more clear, for example, Domino's is for delivery, then Little Caesar for um, takeout, and then we have Pizza Hut, which is for dining in service. And when you consider uh, it is like that, right? When I was in Malaysia, then if we want to order pizza, we would, you know, call Domino and order from Domino's. Um, so think of it under what kind of situations uh, people use your, think of your brand and use your product. Um, is it mostly as a gift or um, do they use it during holidays or what kind of situations? So that you can make those marketing programs and pro promotions better. And number three is the brand personality and values. Brand personality refers to when the brand takes on the personality traits, uh, human traits, for example, as you, your brand can be lively or exotic, uh, old fashioned or modern, etc. Et and how the brand personality is formed, well, you will need to watch my last video. You can find a link at the end of this one and to see how you can make your brand perceived in the customer's mind and what kind of human trait your brand can um, carry, right? 
Thank you for watching. This was one more episode of Strategic Brand Management. If you have questions, I'd be happy to answer. And also, I'd be very glad if you also have more suggestions, what kind of content you would like to see. Thank you.